everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline. You can find me over on Instagram as at Jacqueline Salem. This is a YouTube channel all about my crafting endeavors and my life in Brooklyn, New York City. Today I am coming to you with a video about a pattern hack duping a ready to wear garment. So several of you in my comments have asked a lot of questions about how I do this. So how I like hack ready to wear patterns and I thought since I'm doing one right now that I would kind of show you my process for one of them. It can really vary from project to project obviously. There's also been a few questions about my process for selecting ready to wear garments to dupe. That is like an entire video in and of itself like how I find the inspiration and how I find the pattern. So if you guys are interested in a video like that, let me know. I'd be happy to make it if there's enough interest. But today I'm going to be duping a dress by a brand called Berta. They are a recent discovery of mine because my Valentine's Day sew along dress, but I'm in a bit of a holding pattern with it right now because I need my friend Emily to come over to help me fit it. So while I am waiting to hang out with her, I decided I would start on another dress. So this is another dress inspired by Berta. I'll put a picture on the screen for you guys to look at. It's like a really beautiful corset style top, a gathered skirt, and a the gathered tier attached to that skirt. So I'm gonna take you through my process for how um, I'm going to make this. My fabric selection, of course, I found a really good dupe on fabric.com. Just looking at it, it looks like a Swiss dot. It may not be a Swiss dot because I, pretty sure it's tulle actually that has embroidered dots in it but tulle is really not that comfortable and I want this to be a comfortable dress that I can wear in the summertime so I went ahead and went with a Swiss dot fabric that you may have seen in the opening this one is in the indigo colorway it's from fabric.com I think it's gonna be really nice and comfortable because it's cotton it's breathable it's lightweight so I think this is gonna be perfect for summer so I went with a Swiss dot because I think this will give the garment some structure because it's a cotton and it's like not super, super drapey and I want to retain the architecture of the bodice with the pattern that I'm going to be using. So let's talk patterns. For the bodice, I'm going to be using a new pattern that came out. It's by uh, Daria Pattern Making and it's called the Rose Cafe Bustier Dress. I will say this pattern is not very size inclusive, which is a disappointment because it's so cute and something that I think is really lacking in patterns right now. It's a really unique pattern. I've not seen anything with a bodice like this before. The orange lingerie espalon, espalandra pattern um, that I'm using for my Valentine's Day make is similar, but it's a bra pattern, so it's made for stretchy fabric. So there's not really anything that has been designed yet for wovens except for this new one that just came out so i really hope that she considers um, extending her size range however she does give instructions in her pattern for how to grade it out if you need and it's fa it looks fairly straightforward i'm the largest size uh in the pattern but i still went ahead and added a little bit of extra for insurance and the seam allowance just in case so it is it does seem pretty straightforward as far as that goes but um yeah so i'm going to be using the rose cafe bustier dress by the way this is jacqueline from the future she's had a lot of questions about extending the size range of this pattern which is like really really excellent she put up um, in her instagram stories that she wants to hear from people who want to make this pattern so that she can extend the size range but she needs measurements you know so i'm i think this is her first pattern and I know there are lots of resources online for this sort of thing but if you're interested and want to help her out and want to make this pattern and don't know how to grade it up yourself go to her Instagram stories I'll leave her Instagram handle linked down below and just send her a message saying hey I want to make the Rose Cafe Bustier dress but I'm not in your size range here are my measurements and hopefully she will be able to roll that out pretty soon and then I have this Butterick um, 6453 it's a Gertie pattern for this gathered skirt right here. And so I'm just gonna do a pattern hack between the two. I'm gonna take the Rose Cafe uh, bodice and then I'm gonna attach this skirt to it. 
I'm going to measure the bottom of the skirt and then I will cut a tier. Um, I'm not sure how high, like how tall I'm gonna make it yet. I'll need to look at my inspiration to kind of see what proportions will work um, best for the dress, but uh, I will probably cut the gathered tier at two times the circumference or the width of the bottom of the skirt. So this one's gonna take quite a bit of fabric. I'm hoping I have enough. I think I have like five yards, maybe six yards of the fabric. So fingers crossed that it will be enough fabric. The bodice certainly won't take that much because there's no sleeves on it or anything like that. So when it comes to pattern hacking, it really is just as simple as that. A lot of times what I end up doing is picking out a bodice I really like and then um, self-drafting a half circle skirt just because that is a skirt shape that works really well for my body type, which is a pear shape. And so I will just take any bodice that I like, draft a half circle skirt and then attach it to that bodice pattern. And that's how I do a lot of my pattern hacking. I'm not like an expert on this. I've only been sewing clothes for about five years or so, but pattern hacking is super, super fun. I really encourage you to give it a go because it's not as hard as it looks, especially when you are just adding like a bodice to a different skirt pattern. The one thing I will say that is like a little bit tricky is when you wanna substitute sleeves in because our, like all sleeves are not created equally in terms of like the design and how they fit. So if I wanted to use a sleeve from one pattern and a bodice from a different pattern, I would need to compare the bodices of the two patterns to make sure that the sleeve fits properly into the armhole. So I would change the bodice to make sure, like just at the armhole, to make sure that the sleeve fit in it, if that makes sense. Um, so sometimes sleeves can be a little bit weird, but when it comes to just adding like a different skirt to a different bodice, like your waist shape isn't going to change from pattern to pattern if it's like the same intended fit. Let's get into the project. I'm really excited. I'm going to start uh, pinning my Rose Cafe Bustier dress pattern pieces to the fabric, cut those out and construct the bodice. And then I will come back and cut out the skirt pieces. Okay, let's talk about these pattern pieces for a second. So the way that the pattern is drafted, each size is a different cup size. So for example, my sizing puts me into the large and extra large sizes, a large for the bust measurement and an extra large for the waist measurement. So as per usual, I'm gonna be grading between two sizes. However, this pattern has bra cups and the large size bra cup is a D cup and the extra large bra size is an F cup, I believe, and I am a C cup. So I need the medium size, which the C cup is associated with the medium size for the bra cup. She has a video explaining how to change the pattern for this, but I'm just gonna give a kind of basic rundown of my process. So any pattern piece that touches the bra cup in any way, shape, or form, whether it be like the actual bra cup or the pieces where the bra cup fits into, I cut the medium size right here. So I cut the medium size for the bra cup pieces. That part settled. Now I have to figure out how to get a C cup, which is the medium size, into the size of the bust and my waist measurement, which is the large and extra large. So in order for this bra cup, the medium size, to fit into this bustier right here this has to be cut at the medium size for this cup size to fit here but i need the large and the extra large so what do i do so i'm adding it to this side of the pattern piece there are a lot of lines on here that's kind of a annoyance i find with the pattern she gives you the pattern markings without seam allowance and the pattern marking with the seam allowance i've never seen that before i wish it was just the pattern with the seam allowance because you're gonna use that seam allowance. I'm not sure why they're both there, but that's why all these markings are here. So I've cut the medium size here, but that means I also have to cut the medium size right here. Cause if I cut the large, it would be 
bigger and more space than I need in the cup. So I've cut the medium here and the medium here. But now I need to get this extra width that is right here back into the pattern somehow to accommodate for the circumference of my under bust and my waist. So I'm gonna take what I took out here and add it back into the side seam of this front bodice side piece and also of the back bodice side piece. So she details this, like I said, in a YouTube video that you can watch, but I just thought I would explain that again for anybody who is confused or in a similar situation. But I just took that amount that was not in this part of the pattern anymore from cutting out the medium and added it to the edge of this piece and also widened this piece a little bit because you can always take it in later, but once you cut the fabric, it's cut. So that's why I kind of like err on the side of caution going a little bit larger and uh, yeah. And another alteration that I made was I knew I wanted a center front seam. This pattern piece is cut on the fold, so that means you line up this line right here on the fold of your fabric so that when you open it, it's like two times, you know, like on the fold. But I want a seam here, so in order to do that, I'm gonna cut this piece not on the fold, just as is, but I need a seam allowance to sew these two pieces together. So I've just added this little bit right here as my seam allowance, and then when I sew it, I'll sew it right sides together and sew on this line, essentially, right here. any of the process for sewing up the bodice thus far just because this isn't a tutorial for like the pattern itself it's just following instruction so this is the progress I've made so far on the bustier part of the dress I have the main cut out or the main sewn up I have the lining sewn up and I have the cups for the main sewn up so I need to still sew the cups for the lining the cups are added at the very end of the project so right now I'm kind of at the step where I need to um, cut out the skirt so I'm going to go cut out that simplicity or butterick I'm going to go cut out that butterick skirt now and then I'll be attaching um, the pieces together all right, it's time to cut out the skirt. Again, I'm using Butterick 6465 just for this gathered skirt piece right here. I'm going to take a look at the inspiration photo to see how long I wanna cut the skirt, because of course that's alterable. You don't have to cut a skirt exactly as the pattern piece shows you here, so I can cut it as long as I want, factoring in how long I want the gathered tier to be as well. So I'll figure out like the final um, length of the skirt and then figure out how much I want the or how tall I want the gathered tier to be and then how tall I want this to be so it's just kind of a guessing game at this point like there's real no real formula for it so if I know I want it to hit like midi length I'll take a tape measure and hold it up to myself and kind of see proportionally on the design how tall the gathered tier is in comparison to the rest of the skirt just to kind of make it as close to my inspiration as possible. So looking at photos of my inspiration piece, it appears that the gathered tier on the bottom of the skirt is about one third of the overall length of the skirt. So I think that's the proportion I'm gonna be working with is that the skirt piece that's attached to the bodice is gonna be like the two thirds length and then the gathered tier will be like one third length. Analyzing the pattern, the gathered tier is attached in the same exact way that the cami skirt is done. That means that like the um, part that's gathered is like on the top. It's not sewn right sides together. The gathered part is like visible on the top. So that means I need to finish the edge, the top edge of the gathered tier before I sew it to the skirt. I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. Like I said, I just kind of wanna get the skirt pattern cut out, but I still needed to know like how long I wanted to make it. So I'm just gonna hold a tape measure up to myself, figure out the final 
length of the skirt piece. So I'll start at my natural waist to hold the tape measure up and then uh, drop it down to the floor and then have Andrew look and see like where my, I don't know, mid shin is and then take that measurement and divide it by three. And that's how I'll know how tall to make the skirt versus how tall to make the gathered tier that's gonna be added to it. Where's 40? Right there. Okay. Um, I'll do whatever's easily divisible by three. So 36, what's 36? That's about. That might be cute. Okay, so 36. So you can see it was kind of like a, an arbitrary decision. It wasn't like super exacting. It's just the easiest thing that would like look good, but also be easiest to math out. Now that I know I'm kind of doing each um, piece that has to be like divisible by three in a way, since the skirt again is like two thirds of the length and the gathered tier is one third of the length. The reason I had to kind of figure that out now was because I'm getting ready to cut the main skirt piece and I don't want to waste fabric and cut it longer than I need because I need to make sure I have enough fabric to cut the piece below. So obviously I don't need everything in this packet. I'm only looking for the skirt pattern for view A. So that's what I'm on the hunt for right now. Dress A skirt. Okay, potential plot twist. I've been analyzing the dress, looking at it more closely, and I'm thinking instead of using this Butterick pattern, that I might cut a gathered half circle skirt or a gathered full circle skirt rather than using this pattern. And the reason is, looking at the pattern pieces, they are just giant rectangles that are gathered at the waist because she's designed this pattern to be used with border print fabrics. So upon realizing that, and then looking at my inspiration again, I feel like it looks and moves more like a full circle skirt. So rather than cutting out this skirt pattern, what I'm going to do is met, take my waist measurement, self-draft a um, half circle or full circle skirt. I'll get as full as I can get it with the fabric that I have and do the waist at two times my waist measurement. So my waist measurement is 31 and a half. So I'll do 31 and a half times two, which is 63. I'm terrible at math. Um, and then cut out a skirt that has a waist that is two times my waist measurement and then gather that to the bodice because I think that's gonna give me like a fuller bottom whereas this is gonna be a little bit boxier. Like this is great for, for what she's designed it for so you can use these really cool border print fabrics but mine is not a border print fabric so I think it will swish and move better if we're in like the full circle skirt territory, but I still like the gathered effect at the waist. So like I said, I'm gonna take my waist measurement, multiply that times two, and then either cut out a half circle skirt or a full circle skirt, depending on how much fabric I have, and then gather that to the bodice instead. Laid out the fabric for my skirt, and I have determined that I have enough to cut a two times gathered full circle skirt if I make it two inches shorter. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna do it. I am back in the craft room with my skirt pieces. So I have the top part of the skirt. I'm gonna construct that. And then once I construct that, I will sew it to the bodice and then I will add the gathered tier just to make sure that everything is straight along the bottom because even though I measure as accurately as I can, inevitably when I cut it, it just like gets a little bit uneven. So I just wanna make sure that it is nice and even before I add the gathered tier. So I have plenty of fabric left over for that. And let's get started. I'm excited to see it come together. Right now the skirt is in three pieces. I have one piece for the front and then two pieces for 
the back. So I'm sewing the two pieces of the back together at the side seams to the front. And then I will gather the top. I have surged all edges of the skirt. So now I'm going to uh, run a gathering stitch at the waistline and then gather this to the bodice. Okay, I've just added my gathering stitch. I like to over gather the skirt so then I can just spread it evenly across the bodice. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And I'm going to pin as I go. Okay, we are attached. It doesn't look quite as gathered as I thought it would, so I bet my inspiration is probably somewhere in like the three times, four times gathered realm because it just puffs up so much. But I think this looks great. I really, really like it. And now I'm gonna move on to adding the gathered tier to the bottom. In order to do that, I'm just gonna measure the length of the bottom of the skirt, multiply that times two and cut strips um, that are somewhere in the realm of like 14 inches tall to then attach to the bottom of the dress. Good morning from me and my cupcake dress. <laughs> so I attached the skirt to the bodice and now I'm going to add the gathered tier to it. So I started cutting it out last night, finished cutting it out last night, and then I've sewn all the panels together in this super long piece of fabric that will become the gathered tier. It takes a lot of fabric to do gathering on a two times scale. So when I measured the bottom of this full circle skirt, it was 210 inches. 210 inches times two is 420. So this is somewhere in the realm of 420, as long as I could make it with the fabric that I had. So I used up almost all of it. This is what I have left over. These are kind of just like scraps. I'm saving some of it for the straps. And then um, I'll see if I need anything else, but there's not really a lot of usable pieces in here. It's all just like small little things like this. And usable I mean for like another garment. So now that I have sewn all of the panels together, I'm going to serge around the top and the bottom and I'm gonna finish off the top edge and then turn it under and stitch it down so it's a clean edge and then I'll gather it and start attaching it to the dress. Hello! So yesterday I got a lot done on the dress. Clearly it's not finished yet, but I attached the bottom tier and um, yeah, it's all going really well. So the next steps I think are going to be to attach the lining um, and then also to put in the zipper. Okay, so I was putting this zipper in, and it is by far the worst zipper insertion I've ever done in my life. I am not sure how I could have screwed this up more if I had even tried. Um, and now in the process of taking it out, I've like ripped the fabric in several places. <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to like right sides together and stitch that up and it might have like a little seam line in it. I'm sure it won't be that noticeable once the zipper is in, but like, ugh. That sucks, like royally sucks. I have no clue how I could have messed this up as badly as I did, but I am showing you because yes, I make plenty of mistakes and it's just part of the learning process, but I am going to stop for the night because sometimes you just need to know when to walk away. All right, friends, it's a new day. I ripped out the zip and I reinserted it. It's probably still the ugliest zipper insertion I have ever done, but I don't think I have it in me to redo it for a third time, so I'm just gonna leave it, and I'm gonna move on. 
if you can't see it from a moving train. Right, Mika? Oh, my sweetness. At this point of the dress, there's not much left. All that's left now is to attach the cups, um, encasing the strap within the lining and the mane, and then I need to hem it. And this is a very, very long <laughs> hem because it's gathered on gathers, so it's gonna take a million years, but it will be worth it in the end. Okay, finally, because the cups are one of the last things that you sew into the dress, I can do like a try on. I think it is so cute. I love it so much. The cups are a little bit too big, so I think if I made them again, I could size down next time. And originally I wasn't gonna add underwire channeling, but I think it will help the dress give like a little more structure right here. But overall, I think this is so adorable. Such a good spring and summer dress. I just need to attach the straps over here on both sides and then I need to hem it and it's finished. Oh, and the underwire channeling. All right, she is hemmed. She is beautiful. I don't have the underwire channeling in yet because I do not have the right underwire. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. The last thing that I need to decide is the straps. So I have them normal right now. This is like pinned regularly straight, but I'm wondering if I should do a crisscross strap. Let me show you. Here is the crisscross strap. I can't decide. Uh, okay, I've decided to go with the crisscross straps for now because that requires more length. And then if I ever wanna change it in the future and I don't like it, then I can cut them shorter and do the regular straight straps. So crisscross straps it is, that's the last thing, and then it is done.